Dr. Yash here. So in the last video, you saw that I pulled the engine out of the bike after some di diagnosis of the cooling system. Based on my findings, we have blown head gaskets, um, at least one. I don't know which one it is yet, but we have combustion gases getting in the coolant. So what's going to happen here, uh, you know, you're looking at the front cylinder of the engine. So we're going to go ahead and pull everything external to these cylinders off these, these coolant pipes, this oil pipe here that, that runs down through the cylinders into the bottom. Then we're going to pull the, we're going to pull the rocker cover and the cam chain cover off. We're just going to basically pull the, pull the whole cylinder off. What I'm going to do is change all the engine gaskets, change the piston rings, and we're going to make sure that all the hydraulic lash adjustment uh, adjustments are all because there's a specification for the travel on the push rod and stuff for the for the, for the plunger for the adjuster so we're gonna make sure all that stuff is like new spike's only got like 12,000 miles on it so I don't think any of it's really gonna be out of spec but I'm gonna make sure because we're in there you know so we'll go ahead and start pulling this pulling this cylinder head apart ahead and remove the rocker covers. See, there's different chambers in here. I believe these are uh, defoaming chambers for the oil. Okay. Make sure we don't drop any of this stuff into the engine. But here you've got uh, a piece of the plungers for the hydraulic system. Still pretty unfamiliar with how this system works my first time having this type of stuff apart there you go I got some sludge in the chambers up here so all the more reason to have this coming apart and cleaning it out See the cam chain in there and the uh, chain guide. Yeah, a lot of crap in the middle of there. All this is going to get cleaned up. Back to bare aluminum. All the corrosion taken off. All these alu all these uh, aluminum castings on top. Originally they were nice and shiny, but they're not anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and. I'm going to paint all of them black just to match the gloss black of the rest of the engine and um, you know that way it doesn't look all crusty looking. Intake one, intake two, and exhaust towards the cam chain. 
so I'll go ahead and start bagging that stuff up that way. Baggies are your friend when you're taking apart engines like this, especially in this case where we have a three valve engine, or well, it's six valves, but a three valve per cylinder engine. It's got two intake and one exhaust. You want to make sure everything goes back together the same way it came apart to alleviate any kind of issues. So I'll have one bag that contains the rocker arm, any kind of hydraulic plungers, the valve, the spring, the retainer, the keepers, all that stuff for intake valve number one. And then I'll have one for two and I'll have one for exhaust and then I'll also have it labeled for each cylinder. out RTFM and you can see this is a typical if you've ever seen the inside of a Honda engine then you've seen this before these are called glide pad uh, these are called glide pads on the rocker arms here pretty typical for for Honda on their cars and on their motorcycles. It says remove the timing hole cap from the right crank case, crank case cover, which is this. I wonder if you can use a tire iron. Yep, worked pretty well. I'm not going to be able to show you this, you'll have to take my word for it. Or actually, better yet, let me show you the page in the manual so you can see what I'm supposed to be looking for. If you look here, it shows index mark is inside the hole, and it shows FT and RT on the, on the end of the crankshaft. I just have to turn the crank to the right spot. There's the camshaft, which looks to be in pretty reasonable condition. Put it in a bag. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, lash adjuster and put that in its bag. We get to the good part. We're going to see if this is the blown head gasket or not. I think everything's out of the way and we're ready to go ahead and uh, get this, head, this cylinder head on. Well, I skipped a step, but where the problem is, now I have to come up with a
which I believe I found. I just so happened to have a 27 millimeter head bolt behind me. And the spark plug tube, which you can see the one here, is a 27 millimeter hex. So you have to remove that in order for the cam sprocket to drop down so you can pull the sprocket out so the cam can fold up together and then you can remove the whole thing. You can just pull the head straight off at that point. back out with the wire. Yay. All right. So I don't see anything really bad on the front cylinder. Not yet anyway. Um, one thing I was actually concerned about was the possibility of corrosion around the fire ring on the, on the head gasket. So far I'm not seeing anything like that. So that is excellent news. And I do not think, so far I do not believe that the front head gasket clean this up some more, but I don't think the front head gasket was the blown gasket. It looks pretty clean as far as uh, the fire ring goes. Now you see it's kind of got a little Mickey Mouse ears here for the intake valves. And there's a little bit of, you know, there's some buildup of deposits and, and some the gasket is swollen around the deck surface here where it's open because this is an open deck engine you can tell if you look at that you see how you can see down the sides of the water jacket that is an open deck surface a closed deck would look the same as this cylinder head does you see you have a couple holes here well a closed deck surface for a head or for a, a closed deck would look a lot like this cylinder head yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of corrosion around the fire ring, which is good. There's a little bit where the coolant passages are, but I'm not concerned about that. And um, I am going to lap this cylinder head to clean it up a little bit, just to get any staining off of it. I'm going to pull these valves and lap them as well. 
you can see that's kind of neat, isn't it? Three valve heads, two spark plugs per cylinder. Kind of neat. Two intake valves, one big exhaust valve. So far, so good. Or all this piston hook here. And we're gonna see, well, I guess I'll check it at the bottom too. We're gonna see how thick these deposits are. Let's just get a general idea of how this engine was running. I mean, it ran pretty good for me, even with the long head gasket. Uh, it's pretty much a flat top piston. Pull this cam guide out or chain guide out of here. Pretty much a flat top piston with a cutout for the exhaust valve. The deposits don't look too bad. It's kind of a low miles bike, so. On one hand, you would think not a lot of deposits because it's low miles, but on, on my thinking is it hasn't had any real long distances most likely, so the deposits would accumulate more quickly that way. Now, while we're on to the good news, I'll bring up a little bit of bad news. Look at that, that's disgusting. This cooling system is still filthy, even after cleaning it out. There's just garbage all in it. Look at that disgustingness. So, that's going to need to be cleaned out. I don't see any major corrosion in these water jackets at all. Nothing that really makes me want to, you know, really makes me concerned. I mean, I can get, I can get parts for these really easily uh, used water, you know, used cylinders and used heads and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's disgusting. Look at that. Looks like diarrhea running down the side of it. I said something about not making a mess on my bench, but here we are. The shadow has the runs. Look at that. So I'm, I'm basically scraping the bottom of the water jacket is where all this is coming from. Look at that, just plop. nasty. news is no real damage here like I mentioned I'm gonna be lapping the cylinder head surface the ceiling surface for the head gasket and the deck surface that way I know I've got a good seal when it goes back together all these rusty bolts that come out of it and uh, a lot of these surfaces where there's gaskets a lot of this stuff's gonna get lapped if I see any corrosion on it uh, so far I don't see much that's, that's fantastic Let's see if I can get this oil pipe out of the way now that the cylinder head's off, which I can. That is good. I'm going to put this in a safe place because it's rather small and flimsy. Now the next step is pulling this jug off of here, which is going to be surprisingly easy compared to what we just did, or should be.
going to stuff some rags in here. That way we don't get a whole bunch of dirt. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, that piston doesn't come crashing down. and basically kind of snug up around that connecting rod and keep it from slapping around too much when that comes out. Let's check out this piston. Piston looks pretty good. I don't see any. There's really, really light scoring on this side. You can't feel it. You can see it. I don't even know if I'd consider that scoring. There's just uh, kind of striations on the side of the skirt here. Let's see if I can show you that. You might be able to see it. There's some vertical lines on there. You know, I, nothing too bad. You can't feel any of it. No scuffing. This side of the skirt looks really nice though. Yeah, the piston looks good. That's nice. This is what I wanted to see. Oh yeah. Another part of the cooling system diagnosis. Y'all are going to love this. I've got a mess here. Down in that, down in that water pump there. See that down in that cavity where the impeller goes? Do you see an impeller? No. Here's what a water pump on these is supposed to look like. I ordered a good used water pump. Yeah. There's actually veins on the impeller. There wasn't one, wasn't any on the old one, so that's not too good. It looks really nice. I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting it to be totally trash, but you never know when you're getting into something this old that sat up and has problems. I mean, there is no kind of issues with with the deck surface on that. It might have, it might be blown because it's got some black. Now this thing ran pretty good, even even with it blown, you know, puking and cooling everywhere. So I have to give it that. Mark an F in the front cylinder and the front head. I'll give you a recap after this one comes off and let you know what I find. Alright, so I had to come back because I noticed that I've got both spark plugs in this rear cylinder head. I haven't started trying to pull the head off yet as far as breaking the seal of the head gasket. Valves are up. Should be sealing really good. Well, I noticed it's rolling over really easy. When I try to, uh, you know, when I'm rolling it over to get the, the cam bolts in line to, to take them out, it's rolling really easy. And I'm like, what's that all about? Well, I think I'm about to, I think we're about to find out. to show. 
show you. Let me see what I can do here. You can tell this all has like a certain tone and color to it. Well, it's really black right here. I think we may have it blown towards this side. This water jacket does have a lot more deposits in it, which would cause it to run hotter. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot more deposits in here. Again, nothing really crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of deposits that piled up in here. Stuff that needs to be removed. As you can see, it's, it's piled in there. We're gonna make sure that this water jacket is good and cleaned out before this goes back into service, but nothing too crazy yet. Get all this oil out of this cylinder head, flip it upside down. Let's see what we got here with the head gasket. It'll probably tell a tale. Bunch of one. It'd be nice if this was a little bit more uh, obvious. The fire rings look pretty good, uh, but I'm still seeing where it looks darker towards the cam side or towards the cam chain side of things. This one has a lot more deposits than the other one, and there is some black under here. Usually it's more obvious than this with a blown head gas. I know this cylinder was rolling over real easy though, compared to the front. You can see some spots on this fire ring, like black here. This head could be warped. Let's see. Yeah, so it's yeah, it would have had to have been blown here. As you look at this, you look at this surface here. You can see how it's all kind of a brown color, and then it gets real dark, or black right there. That doesn't do it on this side, but yeah, that's the deck side. I can see black on the deck. Like I said, good news, it's not corroded away. That's actually something I was concerned about. I've seen on outboard engines. I live in a, in a marine area, close to the water, all that stuff. And uh, I've seen engines that have had salt water get in them. And I didn't think this one had salt water in, but just from sitting up in this salty area, um, I've seen open decks corrode away. All right, so checked out this piston too. This rear piston looks good. Obviously, this thing is going to need a lot of cleaning up. All the gaskets are going to have to get scraped. So, I'm going to do some comparisons on these cylinder head surfaces, and I'm going to check those head gaskets. So I'm going to I'm going to lap the deck surface of the cylinder and lap the head, and we're going to look at where the low spots are in it, where it's warped, and we're going to compare the head gasket. We're going to basically see what we're looking at as far as that goes. I am going to put rings in this motor just because the fact that we're here you can see the rings. Uh, why not just go ahead and do them? So it's going to get all cleaned up and all that stuff. Like I said it's going to be like a new engine when uh, I, I have them finished and back on the road. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this part. Yeah we, that's a lot of progress right here. We got the whole top end tore off of it. You know, so I'm uh, pretty happy with that. So, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the deal. And uh, until next time, see ya.